Hello friends, this is Abby Jo and welcome to our cozy fall vlog. I'm bringing you along as we harvest the last of our garden. We're going to get a hard frost in the next two days. I'm picking the ripe tomatoes and then I'll come back and pick all the green ones and lay them out on my kitchen table to ripen. It'll be a few days of going back and forth from the garden to get in all the onions, squash, potatoes, tomatoes, cucumbers, and peppers. My daughter and I want to pick as many flowers as we can to make our last bouquets for the fall season. We have been waiting for the hard frost to come, and it's coming several weeks late this year, in which I have been thrilled to have such a long garden season. We live in zone four. Some years it hovers around zone three, I'm told. In fact, many people didn't think we could grow well here where we live, but we have found out quite the opposite. The garden has been an abundant joy to us. Natasha's pumpkins grew so well, and we have quite a lot to cook and decorate with. So nice not to have to buy any this year. I think working outside and in the kitchen with her has been such a joy. I love seeing her smiling face as she gets excited about all the lovely things she grew and then learning how to can and preserve everything. One of my favorite squash varieties is the delicata squash. They are so lovely roasted and I'm looking forward to adding them to our dinner menu. We counted up the pumpkins and we had a total of 28, not including the squash. I find that bringing children into the kitchen gives them confidence and purpose. And like I've said many times, when you teach children to cook, someday, You'll have teenagers and young adults that are pros in the kitchen and they will be able to cook with confidence. It's such a basic skill that everyone should learn in my opinion. I love seeing my little ones make their own personal pan pizzas and how creative they get when they're adding on the toppings and how satisfied they look when they're done. Talking about pizza, our pizza course is going to be going live very soon. It's taken a little extra time because we added some bonus videos and a fun pizza study unit with coloring pages and lessons each in math, reading, history, and science for the children. I wanted to not only have adults get excited about making pizza, but get the children involved too. I will put a link below for our early bird discount sign up. After getting the food out of the garden before the frost, we then pick buckets of flowers, flowers to make our last bouquets of the season from our cottage garden.
Both my daughter Natasha and I love making bouquets and have dreams of adding more flowers to future gardens. There's something so relaxing in the process of arranging flowers, the colors, textures, and height. How many people throughout the ages have been arranging bouquets for their own homes, I wonder. It's these simple acts of domestic life that I find romantic and satisfying. My cottage kitchen is brimming full of bounty of the garden and bushels of apples for pie, cake, and applesauce. I thought I would make an upside down cake today with apples and some leftover plums. I'm sauteing the apples and butter with some sugar and cinnamon and cooking them until they're slightly soft and sticky. Plums and apples go so well together and the smell is divine. This time of year is so cozy as pots are simmering and treats are being baked, it feels like there's always something going on in the kitchen. I'm making a simple batter for the upside down cake. I have made this recipe in so many of my videos with different ingredients, cranberries, oranges, apples, cherries, and any kind of berry. I will link the recipe below. I love using the recipe because I can change it out for whatever is in season. I ended up making two upside down cakes because we might have some friends dropping by and I like to be prepared and have something good to go with tea. A 
I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. I love that I get to share my home and all the beautiful moments of life with you. So I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe and become a part of this slow living community. Something fun we invested in a few months ago is this gel nail kit. And since then we have been giving each other manicures and it has been so fun. I have never been able to keep my nail polish on my fingers for more than a couple days without chipping them. But these gel nails really stay on, which has been so fun. My three daughters and I will watch a cozy movie and do each other's nails as a little special girl time together. I picked out this lovely brown color for fall. For the last two evenings, we have been lighting candles and painting pumpkins while drinking coffee. It's been really enjoyable. The first night, my two oldest daughters painted and the next evening, I joined the fun. It was very relaxing and a great fall activity to enjoy with family or friends. I thought it would be fun to show you how we display the painted pumpkins. This is my favorite little cozy spot in the house where I like to read or have tea. Natasha's cottage painting on her pumpkin was so pretty, we thought it would look perfect on the coffee table in our sitting room. This year, I really wanted to keep the decor simple and from the garden with our pumpkins and flowers and candles. Sometimes simple is enough. And don't worry, I didn't leave the tall candles burning for only a few minutes. They were too close to the ceiling, but I wanted you to see all the candles lit at once. I only use my tall candle holders for my table and decor on the mantle. The glow of a candle is so lovely. Its flicker is much like that of a burning fireplace, and it seems to draw you in and warm your heart.
I love my sitting room off of the kitchen. This whole room has been put together from thrifted finds, one collected piece at a time, to make a cozy warm spot for our family, to fellowship, read, play games, and have tea. It's my favorite room besides my kitchen. I hope you enjoy seeing it decorated for fall. And when I'm not cooking or decorating, I'm peeling apples for applesauce and getting the last of the harvest into the canning jars and the freezer. Thank you guys so much for coming along with me today just for a cozy fall day at the cottage. Fall is a favorite time of year for me and usually I just get crazy and decorate and have such a fun time, but this year I felt like I wanted to even simplify a little bit more and just focus on just using produce from the garden, pumpkins and squash that we've grown, candles, just really simple things around the house, bouquets of the last bit of flowers coming out of the garden. I just really wanted to enjoy this time to be able to just like cook, bake, spend time with my kids, take walks. I have a ton to do every afternoon with the harvest, which you've been seeing me do. I have been making applesauce and this really good pickle relish. I got to teach my daughter how to can tomatoes. It's been so fun teaching her how to can. She even can some of her own pickled peppers from the garden. So it's been so fun. We've been just canning a little bit every day. We've been dehydrating, freezing, just getting a little bit of harvesting done just for a few hours every afternoon. It really helps us to keep on top of all the harvest that's coming in. Canning and dehydrating and harvesting and putting up all your food is a lot of work. And believe me, when I'm done and it's all on my shelves and in my freezer, I feel so satisfied. It feels like a little squirrel putting away nuts for the winter and I love that. But I'm also relieved because it's time that I get to kind of slow down even more and just start thinking of winter. And there's a lot of things that I don't get to do during the summer and spring months because it's really busy. So I'm just excited about the cozy, quiet months ahead. I'm just for me, a lot of times it's learning, it's reading, it's content creating, it's doing crafts and just cooking more and join my family. So I'm excited to show you all of that. And the last video, you guys have asked a ton of questions. So I definitely want to do a cottage kitchen tour pretty soon. You guys asked what spices that we like to use, what flowers that we planted in the garden this year and all of the above. So I plan on doing some kind of video like that in the future, but I also want to try to get in as much cozy content because it's fall and we're heading into winter and the holidays and I have so many ideas in my head, but I just gotta find the time to be able to get all of it done. So I just appreciate you guys and thank you for asking the questions. Keep asking me questions and thank you so much for watching and I appreciate you guys so much. And so I just really hope you guys are also enjoying this time of year and just savoring every little bit. And I just wish you guys all a happy, happy fall. When I spend afternoons canning, freezing, and dehydrating the harvest, simple meals are my go-to, like today. Homemade biscuits, I don't even bother with cutting out circles. I just cut mine into squares and bake them up. I make a quick chicken gravy out of my home canned chicken.
Easy no fuss meals give me more time to deal with the glut of the garden harvest. It's time to serve up dinner, and I'm still finishing up the batch of applesauce. We like a chunky applesauce, so I cook my apples down, already peeled, until I get the right consistency of sauce. Dinner menu is biscuits, chicken gravy, sliced ripe tomatoes, black beauty variety, and a homemade applesauce. I serve it buffet style on the kitchen island. That's what afternoon and nights look like when canning and preserving the harvest.